Okay, hello everybody. Thank you for coming along to this webinar. This webinar is to cover off the sales and general information on the links to phone system. As indicated earlier, there are some handouts that can be downloaded on board and at the end of this webinar there will be a series of questions, just about five of them for you to answer and uh, just to get you some feedback and um, get an understanding of uh, how everybody is doing out there. So thank you again, thank you for taking the time. So uh, let's get going and I'll just change a few things here. Okay, let's start off. First of all, the Transtel links. Uh, you may have seen some of our Transtel products before in regards to analog phones, etc. But the Transtel um, links is a system that has been around for the last uh, three to four, maybe even five years now. It has been sold in the US, Indonesia and New Zealand. It has not been introduced into the Australian market until now. The Transtel brand is a um, one of the major overseas brands that Auto Telecom use, particularly in the US and Indonesian market, um, on top of the Hybrix, and uh, they also use the Transtel in Asia as well. In the US, uh, it is well known to companies, government agencies like the Federal, Federal Aviation, Century 2 to 1, Remax, Ace Hardware, etc. It's very much the same family as the Hybrix um, G1E and GDS series that you are familiar with, um, for those of you who are. So it should be a pretty easy um, crossover, shall we say, to uh, get across the new design. Fundamentally, it displays all of the, um, the auto telecom features of being it's a robust architecture, it's uh, very flexible, it has the, the Lynx 308 and Lynx 2 basically has the uh, price sensitive market in mind. At the moment we've got the G1E Plus sitting in the small to mid range, um, extension range, you'll know where that sits. But where we're targeting the Lynx 2 is in the 308 market and as we go through this presentation you'll see why. And it actually offers a lot of uh, punch. It's not designed to take over any of the G1E Plus um, market, it is purely designed for the 308 or the 8 extension and under and to take advantage of the NBN. The Lynx has been bundled together to basically work out of the box and to offer a good solid, well actually a quite aggressive feature set when you take it out of the box. It's comparable to uh, the larger Hybrix systems. It, um, and it competes exceedingly well against most other brands that um, I know of. Uh, we have uh, had the Lynx uh, over in New Zealand now for a number of years and there's really nothing that can stand up to it for its price versus functionality and in particular if you put it into the market that is intended for with a lot of the voice over IP um, situations coming out, the customers want to use the voice over IP lines, but really they don't appreciate or they don't even have the infrastructure to support a pure voice over IP solution. We'll be covering off this quite in much more detail later in the presentation, but fundamentally there are people out there wanting to put voice over IP phones into their network, but A, they don't have a network, e.g. They don't have a, a satisfactory Category 5 or Category 6 cabled network. And on top of that, their IT is um, infrastructure perhaps a little bit um, basic in regards to they might have a router which is more used for domestic use and no PoE switches or no managed switches for voice over IP. So this is where the uh, product like the Lynx will fit in um, exceedingly well. It's very easy to install. It's literally out of the box, plug it in and away you go. A lot of you who, well most of you I'd say who's on this presentation would um, fully understand the programming methodology of the Lynx because it's just about identical to your G1E. It's um, fully digital with a voice over IP interface with and SLT options etc and of course voice over IP. The system is 
basically out of the box pre-configured for three outside lines or CA lines and eight digital extensions and it has a full featured um, voicemail on board and auto attendant. The functionality of the, the voicemail is very much the same or just about identical identical to the G1E Plus. It um, will go into the more details of how many mailboxes and hours etc but it has all the auto attendant and it has the delay operator queue as well. The Lynx is, is capable of further expansion. Okay, um, The basic 308 is three CR lines and eight digital extensions, but we can expand it by another four, four voice over IP port trunk card. E.g. it's an, IT, an ITUN type card, very much the same as on the G1E. It can also expand by another eight extension digital card and um, a 308 line card, analog card, which we haven't actually released uh, with this package in Australia, but it is there as an option if you wish to, to have it. The Lynx allows you to basically take all of the professional functionality of a G1E and now push it down very easily into your under eight extension uh, mark, your small businesses. Most of the businesses in Australia, if you, if you actually start doing your, your stats, etc., 90% of them are small business. And you could argue that um, I would say at least 80% of them are under the eight extension mark. And with the NBN coming out, the, uh, the links will offer a solid solution that will enable you to connect to your NBN and but still use your traditional infrastructure which most of these small businesses will have um, to offer them a, a voice over IP trunk solution. Let's just run through the, uh, the main equipment and uh, have a chat through some of the uh, points of it. Specifications etc. So we've got three CO lines Okay, those three CR lines are fully caller line ID capable using FSK. Um, E.g., um, customer calls in and they will ring in and their ID will come up on the telephone. You can expand it by another three CR lines if necessarily, but with the initial release of the package, we're just saying sit around about three and talk about us about the expansion for to another set of CR lines if you wish. I think it's going to be handled on a one-off on, a one basis as we go forward and we work out exactly where the links fits with a lot of the individual resellers. You can expand it by another four circuit voice over IP line and it's got, e.g. you can connect it to your MBN. The advantage of this having the, the, the two trunk cards separate is that we could essentially install the links with an existing customer with two one or even three lines, install it, make sure it's all settled down, make sure the customer's trained, they're all happy with it, and then when you're ready you can then connect it up to your ITSP of your choice, um, for example NetPhone. You could uh, set up the NetPhone to your um, voice over IP trunks, make sure that they're working, take your time with it, put them so that the customer so they can dial out on the uh, voice over IP lines, leave it there for a week or so, Again, no rush about this, it's entirely up to you. And then when everything's happy and stable, uh, you then can port across the um, their main numbers to the voice over IP and basically deactivate the CO lines if you so wish. The digital extensions, we have got eight of them. We can expand that by another eight to a maximum of 16. So if you don't need SLT ports, you can expand it using any of the DK range, which we'll talk through later, including the ACP. Analog extensions, there is a 308 card, which we've talked about, which could get you out of jail if until we get the new two port uh, card operational. It's a matter of a month or two away from my understanding. We'll keep you updated with that. But essentially, uh, we are looking at doing the system as a 382. So you can have your CO lines, your eight digital extensions, and your two analog ports, such things as cordless phones, uh, FPOS, etc. Auto attendant, yes, it has the full auto attendant that you are useful, used to. It is a four channel unit, so we can have 
um, the, the delay operator announcement. We can have the um, day and night um, auto attendant and or lunch mode. Um, and all of the, the interaction for single digit dialing, etc., all standard on the system. The voicemail, yes, it comes full, fully set up with a voicemail. Now, only specs you've got to look out for on this is that it's got eight mailboxes on board. Sorry, just shoot back there. We've got eight mailboxes. Now, those eight mailboxes can be assigned to any extension in the system, e.g. if you want, um, you don't want the operator, extension 11 to have a mailbox, but extension 12, 13 and 14 to have a mailbox, that's great. Or if you want to use a virtual mailbox, you can assign a virtual port to have a mailbox, so you can have an after hours message and that kind of uh, information. So maximum eight mailboxes, assign at any um, port you pretty much want. Total voice um, recording on your voicemail is two and a half hours for those um, eight mailboxes and that's divided up pretty much evenly between that. Uh, on the programming you don't have to set any limits or any um, time limits etc. You simply assign a mailbox and it um, will divide it up evenly across those mailboxes. An RS-232 port, um, yes, standard, ready to go. It's generally for call accounting etc. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how many, um, how much call accounting is important to you out there nowadays, but it is available on, on the system. Battery backup, optional, yes, it uses, um, well, we, well, I call it a B box, which is the standard battery box for the Hybrix systems. Now they, uh, the battery boxes generally will keep a Hybrix um, GDS system, for example, running for four hours and prove that a number of times, four, four and a half hours. Um, I'm saying four and a half hours plus of battery time on this because I've never actually put a battery box onto a Lynx to see how long it lasts. But I suspect it's significantly more than four hours. So, but let's say four hours and we'll be all nice and safe on that one. Again, full operations of the system, etc. External music on hold, yes, we do have that, but we've also got the standard Hybrix VMU uh, music as well, which can be used at um, any stage. Um, so again, optional, uh, it's there, or you can have external. Um, external paging, yes, same interface port, ready to go. Dimensions, relatively small, 290, by 230 by 76 and it weighs 1.2 kg. So if we have to start having a look at how the system can be configured, this is pretty much what it's like out of the box. So you've got your telecom network lines, all caller line ID, um, ready to go. And then you can put up to eight system phones just on the standard system. Now, this, in this particular case, we're just using the DK7s as an example for the, um, for the phones, but the system can use most of the DK, um, DK range, so it's quite flexible on how you configure it. I'm using the DK7s uh, mainly because in the, the, the lower end market, the uh, customers might be a little bit more price sensitive as we can all appreciate. But we have voicemail, standard, ready to go. We've got auto attendant in there as well. We've got call login port if we want SM, uh, the SMDR out, output so you can connect the PC up there with the caller county package if you so wish. And of course your music on hold. Via an expansion of a ITUN card, which is available now, we can now have it sitting at three PSTN and four voice over IP. Again, from a perspective of uh, porting across voice over IP lines, uh, sorry, porting the PSDN numbers across to your voice over IP lines, I'm, I'm a great advocate of actually having everything set up before you do it. Um, a lot of the disasters I've seen in the past is when people are trying to put in a uh, voice over IP system straight from scratch and they're literally on the day trying to set up the uh, voice over IP lines trying to get it working through the customer's network, which um, as you probably would agree, those who have done it can be a little bit of a challenge. And then porting across. Now, telcos, 
they're good fun, I'll tell you that. Um, they're a rule into their own, as we all know, and um, yes, they'll try and set a day, but half the time you could be sitting out on a site waiting for a telco to um, do what they're meant to be doing, and that can take hours. So, whereas if you have a um, the lines working ready to go and the voice over IP side of the things on working on outgoing and all you have to do is port them across, you could in theory be close to the customer, but you don't have to be actually on site because um, you could set the system up to dial out on the voice over IP straight away so they're using it for outgoing calls, then all you're waiting for is the porting to go across to the um, voice over IP trucks for incoming calls and if, if, and I say if, the telco does this right, they will just drop across and immediately start ringing up on the ringing assignments that you've set up in the system. Next configuration on board, we can have another eight digital DK ports. Now, at 16 um, ports for a um, three lines or, or four VoIP lines, three CO lines or four VoIP lines, you would think, well, that's getting a little bit heavy on the, the extension side of things, which is just fine. Just think about it that you can have all the various different types of DK phones we have, but we can actually also use the ACP range, um, which is available on um, all the auto telecom equipment. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more uh, tools for your kit in regards to your sales and configuration and how you do things. Okay, now this is the future bit. It's not that far in the future. Basically, when we first started uh, looking at the system, I did speak to uh, a number of the resellers uh, quietly in the background, like I do, and just got some feedback before we started launching it out there. And one of the things that was, was very clear from uh, Greg, Jim, and and the resellers I spoke to was basically that. Um, at the very least, we're going to need two analog ports to, to make this puppy um, a lot more flexible and attractive in the market. So we went back to the factory and explained this to them because they didn't have this. And they have said, yes, absolutely, agree where you're coming from. Um, so we uh, they are making a Pacific two-port um, analog card for us. now. They're actually putting a bit of horsepower behind it and a bit of speed, so I'm expecting to see them honestly uh, within the next, um, let's say, two months, probably realistically. But we're not going to wait for them to ship. As soon as they're ready, uh, we're going to put them on the uh, the bird, big silver bird, and fly them over here so we can uh, get them get them running. So there could be a few uh, limitations at the moment if you've got a customer that needs the S a couple of one or two SLTs, e.g. If POS, although I believe most of that's heading across now to IP based, um, or your cordless phone is probably the most most uh, most the issue that you're going to need it for, uh, and or I don't know a fax or something along those lines. But we've we've noticed that even the faxes are slowly beginning to die out as we go through. So that will be uh, coming along quite soon. The interfaces. <laughs> Just run through the interfaces for those those of you who are perhaps a little bit new to the to the systems. You have your three traditional loop start lines. These can be expanded to six with the addition of a card. Okay, um, and they are Duet uh, capable. Now, from our discussions with various people, Duet isn't a big thing out there nowadays. But hey, there's always one customer who's possibly using it for like a fax type scenario and or a main line if they've only got one line and they want extensions or something along those lines. Um, you know, my experience in this market over here is that it has been used, so it's there if you need it. Just, just take it from that perspective. You've got the digital extensions. Um, as the eight digital ports. They are the standard two-wire interface ports, very much along the same way as the G1E Plus and GDS series. They're designed to take the DK6, the DK7, the DK8, and the DK9, um, and it can be expanded by an additional uh, eight-circuit card. So, again, it's 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 actually for a little switch. It's, it's quite flexible and cool. So, if the customer's so tied up on price, you can use the DK7s, which are designed initially. Believe it or not, the DK7s where you got them from, because I know they've been in the Australian market for a couple of years now. 
the DK7s are actually designed for the Lynx and they were branded Transtel, but Australia brought them in branded as Hybrix, which is fine. But the, um, so it's the cost effective phone that was designed to be with, with the Lynx, but the Lynx will run the DK6, DK8 and DK9. And uh, I hate to say it, even some of the older version, DK2s, etc. but uh, I wasn't meant to mention that. Um, the point being, again, it good offers you flexibility. Why is it so important? Well, because I've had a number of cases where um, for some reason the customer wants a whole bunch of buttons. They don't need them for DSS line appearances. What we've found is that they just want to use them for um, dialing speed dials, for example. So they might have a, a bunch of branches, because this system is absolutely perfect for that type of scenario, where um, they just want to pick up the phone and punch um, Melbourne branch or uh, dial up to Brisbane and they just want to, so they just want a bunch of speed dials on the DSS key. So that's that's where you'd use the big multi-key um, phones um, for the links. A single line um, telephones, most of the ones that you'll probably be dealing with are the two port. Um, doesn't have them as standard, but there's the two port one we're talking about. That is a fully featured um, card that has the message waiting on board, it has the caller line ID, compliant FSK, type 1 and 2, so that means if uh, you've got a type 1, you just want the number showing through, it'll display on, say for example, a cordless phone, just the number. If you've got type 2, you can actually then name extensions and that type of thing, so when an extension rings, the extension, uh, extension 13 Greg would come up, for example, on the display, so they can see what's going on from that perspective. The RS-232, we've talked about that, it's on the main board, it's standard call accounting software and software upgrades to the system. Just so in case a question gets asked of this later, there is no um, software to program this on your PC, it is all programmed by, um, by hand on the telephone. It is very simple to program, uh, an experienced technician can pretty much rattle this thing through in about um, 10 minutes. Um, just, I'll just diverge slightly on this point here. This is a 308 system. When we initially designed it, we designed it to compete with a Panasonic 308. Okay? Those of you who have used a Panasonic 308 will understand it's a good switch, nothing wrong with it. It's got a P in the beginning of it, but it doesn't do a lot compared to a Hybrix or a Transtel. The Transtel will have, has the same software engine as the G1E+. My advice to you gentlemen is keep it simple, okay, the KISS theory, because the Transtel, this can take you 10 minutes to program, this could take you half an hour to program, if you really want to get adventurous it could take you a couple of hours to program, but bearing in mind that when you're installing this thing you're wanting to get in and out without any issues, the more complex you make it, the more you involve, make sure that A, you're either charging your customer and it's in your quote, sales quote at the very beginning and all your T's and C's are covered off, um, or just make sure it's simple, one of the two. So just, just be, be aware of that trap, just sharing a bit of experience I've had with some resellers where they've, the customer's gone in there and they've talked about everything it can do and suddenly the customer wants everything it can do and it's taken them a while to figure it out. So try and keep it as simple as possible. It's got all the functionality, but just make sure that you uh, are programming it and from a business perspective, shall we say, so it's economic for you guys. Um, external music on hold ports, 3.5 DIN plug, don't forget your music on hold isolator, the LIUs. It has a relay sensor and paging port, so it's pretty much the standard suite that a G1E has got. A G1E has got. So the relay is for things like wanting to activate an external loud bell, um, for an extension or a trunk ringing, or if you need it for a paging system that you're connected to that needs to have a dry contact relay close just to activate the pager. Set support etc is used for like door alarms etc, uh, places we've used it is for warehouses etc, that type of thing, um, a back a fire door for example, emergency exit door for the fire door, someone opens up and triggers off all the phones so nobody can sneak equipment out the side door without knowing about it and of course it's the paging port for paging. 
battery backup, we've talked about that. But uh, again, optional, but just plugs in and away it goes and it'll keep the system running for well over four hours. The hardware, let's have a quick look at this. Some of you may notice this looks familiar, um, except for you might have seen this sort of layout when it was white. Um, it's using pretty much the same plastic as the G1, but uh, that's about as far as the familiarity. The rest of it are totally uh, new generation, um, totally new generation. So let's kick off. So what we've got here are our digital ports. So basically um, uses the DK plugs to terminate on board, two center pins for port one, two outer pins for port two, same as in here, port 13, two inner plug plugs, two outer plugs, two wire out to the telephone. There's your basic eight circuits ready to go. It's skipped onto the RS-232 port, but I would point out this little area here, the JP1. This is your default normal running strap. Um, for those of you who are confused, it must be at normal. Um, if it's sitting across at default, that basically clears out the system. and It's a great get out of jail card if something horrible goes wrong with the system. But um, I've had cases, and I'm sure you've probably had some experience with it yourself, where occasionally something goes wrong, the strap is put to default, program's all up, runs normally, first power cut that comes along, system defaults. Uh, embarrassing but and a bit of a pain, but that's life, I guess. So just be aware of it, but it's got the strap there, so you don't have to open it up. Something goes wrong or you can't get into the system, for example, someone's passworded it and forgotten the password and locked the entire thing down so you can't get into it at all, you could default the system mode 25 to it and away you go. RS-232 plug, again, standard um, with the systems, comes with a um, RS-232 cable. You've got your relay and sensor and external paging on this area here. Again, you just plug in the standard uh, cables, flat cables, and then with uh, a termination plug uh, jack, etc., on the end, and um, you can then wire off your paging sensors, etc. The external relay, actually, I forgot, um, is also can be used for if you've got ACPs on the unit for security, where people, because the ACPs, of course, have got an onboard relay but you can actually pair up the onboard relay with a common relay at the back of the system and wire the, the locks back through the system. And that stops people from um, basically trying to crack open the, um, the lock um, because they can't complete the circuit because the circuit goes all the way back to the system and both relays have to close at the same time. External music on hold, pretty self-explanatory. Um, once you've got it connected there, that can be used for your background music on the system phones, if you so wish. Um, actually, one of the huge advantages of having still digital phones on your desk versus a voice over IP phone. I've yet to see the voice over IP phone do background music for me. Um, so you can um, either use this just for the background music or use it for the external music on hold, etc. Um, don't forget, as I said, the music on hold and um, isolator. Um, and well, I'm sure you've got your own sources of um, music on hold. The three CO lines, these are the standard. Now, two center pins connect up and away you go. So again, these have um, busy tone detect, um, reverse all that type of thing and call alone ID. Then head into your uh, battery backup, 24 volts, so it's just one uh, set of battery boxes and away you go on that. There's your power. So it's all, all, all on board. There's no external power pack on, on board for this thing. Uh, 240 volt plug-in, ready to go. Now this one up here, this is for your optional voice over IP card. Or through your, those of you who are note, or sort of noted, you might notice, well, hang on, it's got three CR lines there. <coughs> yes, it does. Um, but the Voice over IP option here is the one that just plugs in. It's a single card, just plugs in above this area here. And now you can have your CO lines connected, set up your voice over IP card, and away you go. And then you've got your optional expansion card. Okay. This is really just going to be for your moving forward for your two port analog. Um, there are other options perhaps if you need to, but 
generally if the G1, if the Lynx 2 doesn't fit um, the needs, e.g. it's as I said, it's under a 308 type scenario, then use the G1E Plus, okay? The key advantage with the, the G1, sorry, the key, the key advantage of the G1E, it can grow, it can be expanded, it can be expanded into a G1E Plus M um, using the full enterprise software engine on it. The G1E Plus is simply an entry point for under eight extensions. It comes with voicemail, it comes with auto, or the auto attendant. So, or through, in some ways, the pricing of it, you might think, well, hang on, the G1E, um, basic is the similar price, but it can't pack as much punch as this thing. So this is targeted for a new market. This is not designed to take over anything from the G1E Plus. This is designed for under eight extensions in the 308 market. Phones. This is the DK7. Most of you will be familiar with it. You'll notice this particular one is branded Transtel. But it is no difference between this phone and the phones that you are currently selling at the moment in regards to DK7s. I won't spend too much time on this, but, but I've picked on the DK7 phone because it is the entry level and it was designed initially for this system. Fundamentally, for the price, it's actually a very well featured little phone. It's got the DSS buttons, it's got the display, hands-free background music, uh, you can run a headset on it if you have a, um, a switch mode box on it, e.g. it doesn't have a designated um, headset port like the, um, for example, the, the DK8 or the DK6 versions or um, even the DK9, so there's no designated headset port. So, but it has all the headset functions, which is identical to the, um, the other phones, but you just have to use the single handset port. And if you want to use a handset and a headset, you need to basically use like a headset splitter. We we'll call it like an MPS, what we call them over here. They're basically a plug that plugs into the, 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 the handset port, and then with a switch on it, you can swap it between the handset and the headset and dial your uh, 775 to toggle um, the headset function on and off. So, two-line display, eight handset volumes, eight speaker volumes, ringing gradual, hands-free, etc., etc. Okay, so that's all ready to go, and you're probably very familiar. But here's the other options that you can have all on board. Now, just a couple of things I'm pointing out here. I've got the entire DK6 range, and it works very well. Now, on the DK621. Um, there's just more buttons than you would have um, extens extensions. Um, you've only got 16 extensions, and even with the lines, you're going to run. You've got plenty of keys spare. Where I've seen these used, as I've already explained, is simply for the speed dials. So you can use the keys um, to to um, just do one touch, etc. And it works just the way that you are very familiar with. So um, there's no transition up to there. So the entire DK6 range is all on board. The new DK8 range is um, will also work on it. Uh, the DK7, which we talked about. We've got the DK9 down here. Now you'll notice there's one obvious missing. I've got the DK915, but I don't have the DK9, uh, is it 25, I think, on top of my head. Um, reason is that it's really seriously overkill for the, um, the links. I can't think of a single reason why you would put a uh, that phone on board plus the display drives are only two line, so with the um, DK925, uh, it's just, just massive, really. So it, um, it's a bit overkill, so I've just left it off the, the presentation here. But now you've got the ACP40, the ACP30, and ACP20, I believe that is. Um, so these are the digital um, access control. Um, you can load swipe cards, pin numbers, all that kind of thing against them, and the links will drive the drive these as well. Always been a strong point of the well, the Hybrix brand range and also the Transtel is that it does have all these digital um, access control options. And when you are selling out there against a um, against a voice over IP type solution, you've got to take um, as many advantages as you can really against it. 
And again, in this market, I honestly believe that a lot of the um, smaller businesses will not have the infrastructure, e.g. the cabling or networking ability to support a lot of the, um, the higher level high, or higher tech um, phones and devices. So, or through they still want the voice over IP, which we can give them. Uh, we, um, we are still using the existing copper infrastructure, which is, for their, their perspective, easier to support and uh, more reliable. The software engine. You're pretty much um, familiar with most of it, but the system is set up um, to pretty much plug it in and it works. Now, Greg is working on the system defaults for Australia, um, which we'll go through and um, you're just waiting for the defaults to come through, but fundamentally you plug it in, extensions will ring on, a, uh, incoming calls will ring on extension um, 11, you dial out in trunk group 1, you can transfer it through and everything's pretty much set up, but we'll go through that in a second. So here's the, the basic plug and play programming that's set up in the system. So it's dial, um, dial 9 for an outside line, dial 0 for the operator, extensions 1 to 18, um, standard with the system, the expansion extensions 19 to 26. You've got virtual extensions already set up, pre-programmed 41 to 42. Um, these can be used for voicemail, answer points, day and night mode, that kind of thing. Um, just off memory, the um, yeah, off memory, the extensions 11 to 16 have six of the voicemails and extension 4142 has the other two. So it's been set up that 4142 are um, virtuals, so you don't have to program them up, they're ready to go, or you have to change them, one of the two. Dial 89 to record the system greetings, just about identical, well it is identical to the um, the bigger systems. Dial 86 for voicemail, etc. Incoming call, assignments will ring on extension 11 during day mode, and extension 11, 12, 13, and 14 will ring on night mode. Other general setup, we've talked about the voicemail already. I've got it, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's actually 14, 15, and 16 there, so the presentation's slightly wrong. A single line telephone, uh, Greg is getting this sorted out. It'll be down to 18 milliseconds in the, um, very shortly, but at the moment it's setting to 600. Centrix gateway, same thing. Music on hold source uses the music, uh, the, um, the voicemail card, of course, because it's all equipped standard has clear forward, loop disconnect, and busy tone detect all on board. Um, hot keys are enabled, which will probably be changed, and we've got class of services, which will also be changed. But Greg will send out an update on them once he's got that sorted out. So it's complete. It's pretty much ready to go. Um, as we get the um, system into the market, we may be changing a few things and changing a few positions on where we pitch it. But a lot of it is um, based is going to be based on feedback from you um, in regards to once you start selling it, what how we present it or how we position it in, in the market. But again, I just like to point out it is a 308 type um, system. So, key advantages of the um, links, and it's pretty much the same as most of the, the hybrids that you're selling out there. I fully appreciate that you are heading more into a voice over IP market. A lot of the businesses out there aren't ready for it in respect, well, they're not ready for the, the impact. Um, I see a lot of salespeople going out there selling pure voice over IP solutions. And because of the customer infrastructure, um, because their routers aren't right, because the MBN hasn't arrived properly or it hasn't been deployed properly or just general muck-ups, it's very, it's very hard. So I always caution people when going down voice over IP. Is it a bad thing? No, it's a great thing. I encourage it immensely, but you just got to go in there with your, wire, your eyes open. You know, for example, if you're going in there selling a, um, for example, a Lynx 2, and you're going to put voice over IP on it, and the customer has their own routers and modems, etc. You can't you can't be accountable for them. Uh, the, you didn't put them in; they're not there to support. So when you're doing your T's and C's, make sure that you write into the fact on your T's and C's. This is what you cover. This is what you don't cover. Even right down to the time. This is the amount of time I expect to be on site. And if there's anything beyond my control, e.g., the um, the telco decides they want to sit around for three hours, um, that that is additional charging. Now, I know some people struggle with this, and it's 
it, and it is something for the customers to get used to as well because they're not used to it. But as you go towards the the IT side of things, you know, if you get someone in looking at your computer or looking at your server, you don't blink when they break it and have to come back the next day, and you're going to be charged for it because that's the way it is. So uh, just just make sure the key thing is from my from what I'm trying to tell you is just sit down closely and look at your T's and C's, your terms and conditions, because the trouble is is that you are Charlie and Charlie. You're putting a voice over IP system or a phone system on the end of, uh, of a network. If anything goes wrong up the network, the customer is going to look at you to fix it because basically it's sitting, it's it's displaying the fault on your equipment or their equipment at the very customer premises. And but you, but the voice over IP is only as good as its weakest link. It could be the router, it could be the MBN, it could be the telco not provisioned it right, it could be an interconnect agreement between all the different telcos that are turning up. So I think we'll keep the subject for a, a separate one, but if anybody does want to talk more about it, I'm more than happy to. But it's, it's, um, it's something that as the business changes, we have to change our businesses to adapt and grow. Um, we don't have to know everything, but we just we do need to start, start moving towards that area. So let's, let's hit the auto attendant. So auto attendant doesn't really care if it's voice over IP or CO line. It's got four ports and arts of four ports simultaneously. Options one to five to um, dial day, night, and lunch mode. Okay, you ring an assignment. You've got three ring an assignments now. You've got your uh, day, lunch, and night mode again. Auto auto attendant can be immediate or delay in all modes. Your delay operator. This has always been a kicker on the Hyrex. This is, and I'll tell you, as and we've had customers come with giving us feedback that when someone's gone in and say. You know, which happens, uh, say for example, a Hybrix is put out and the voice over IP equipment goes in. You know one of the biggest complaints we get? The delay operator. And I'll tell you why it's, it's, a, it's a problem for them, because the delay operator is actually quite unique in the Hybrix, because we can actually tell it um, to answer even if an extension is ringing. So e.g. we could have five extensions ringing simultaneously and then have the delay operator answer and put them on hold and those five extensions will keep ringing. Now you think, oh, big deal. Well, it is a big deal because you go and have a look and see what systems can do that and I think you'll find that, well, they can't. Um, it's always been a strong selling point for the Hybrix and the, um, the hybrid days and now it's even, uh, it is a strong selling point for um, when you're heading into the voice over IP, because we can do voice over IP on the trunks, we can use the customer's infrastructure, and we can offer some unique features which uh, a voice over IP solution still can't do. Um, announce attendant, um, wake up calls, etc. Everything all standard, ready to go there. Name trunk lines. Yes, all the same as uh, what you've done. So you can, if a CO line is named, you can line each individual name up to eight characters, you can name extensions up to 11, you can name speed dials, search by name, dial by name, and one of the key things, you can actually even name your DDI numbers. Now this is handy for small businesses that um, perhaps haven't had the ability to, they've had like one or two lines and they answer Joe's plumbing, but they've also got a Joe's electrical and they might have had one line for this and one line for that. Now they can actually have use DDIs coming in, so they can have multiple advertised numbers. The system can recognize them um, through and naming them in speed dials, etc. Tell it an extension commands to display the number dialed instead of the uh, caller line ID. And suddenly you've got Joe's plumbing coming up on one call and Joe's electrical coming up on the other, so the customer now can position themselves um, a far better image out to their customers. So again, the, the systems are always done this well, and there's an advantage to take off there. Intrusion uh, should be generally familiar with it. You've got eight levels of intrusion, and, and um, basically from the top down, boss can intrude. The monitor, silent monitor. You've always uh, been struggling with this one at times, but it is handy. Even a um, a small company can have someone who's a call center or um, an outbound telemarket type person getting business and uh, the boss might want to, or the supervisor of them might just might want to, to monitor them and just double check that they're, um, they're saying the right thing um, out, out, to the, uh, out to the customers. We have whisper mode, 
the um, this is a really cool feature. Basically, uh, I could be talking away here on my phone, and then the um, some someone might want to tell me something, and they will come up in my ear, and I can hear them, but the external party can't, and they can talk to me, etc. Politicians probably love this one, um, so that their advisors can answer the questions while they're uh, on the phone for them. Other software specifications should be pretty familiar with it. Full LCR, least cost routing if you wish, so if you do have CO lines and voice over IP, you can do that, or if you've got, you can still use multiple um, multiple uh, ITSPs to provide, to, for example, out of the four um, voice over IP lines, you could split them into two, uh, my, net, uh, my net phone for one and company B for the other type scenario. Um, all the multi-language uh, displays, call on ID, 90 volt detections, etc. The list goes on, so you can browse through them as you go. The sales opportunity. As I've sort of been discussing through the whole um, presentation, the sales opportunity is um, in regards to hybrid switches are still out there. Yes, there is voice over IP being sold, and yes, with the uh, NBN, there's a huge amount of people wanting to get across voice over IP. But fundamentally, guys, the customers don't understand voice over IP. Okay? They'll, they will understand what someone comes and tells them. Now, your opposition out there who aren't selling PABXs or selling cloud and all that kind of thing, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it works absolutely fine. What I am um, saying is that it's not the end all of everything and a lot of the customers out there they want a new phone system they want to take advantage of the voice over IP out there but they don't want to do a forklift upgrade for the entire backbone that's sitting in their office now I would ask each of you to look at what you've got in your offices now I'm sure most of you have got a half decent network but do you have PoE switches for all of the um, all of your VoIP phones that you would need. Do you have um, category six? Do you have uh, 10 base switches, 100 base switch, or do you have um, one gig backbone on the switch? What's your router? Is it a Thompson? Is it a Draytech? Is it a um, Cisco? Or is it a Kanimatsu? Um, how's that going to react with voice? What's its SIP ALG tables like? Will they will they knock off the voice over IP in the long term? So it's, it's, it's a complex thing, and it, is, and it can be an expensive thing. What I'm saying out here for this particular system is, for the small end system, the under extension, under six extensions, the two or three or four line customers out there, the links to is an opportunity to get out there and break into a market that you haven't been able to get into before. Now there's an awful lot of them out there. Now whether you're just out there selling the three hour weights of the futures of the NBN or you're out there wanting to um, put them in and then roll them across, it's entirely up to you and entirely using the model that you use. The great thing with this is the customers can do a direct connect to their um, existing modems etc. They don't have to worry about putting in the new backbone. The traditional backbone can be still used and maintained and it's very cost effective, okay, because to get a normal tech, uh, phone tech out there is XYZ dollars per hour, to get an IT technician out there to start solving backbone problems is, well, probably a lot more expensive. So so have a look at it from that perspective. You can start seeding your um, customers now with um, the links to then upgrade on voice over IP later if you so wish. Again, very much optional. So that's pretty much it at, at, at this point in time. I'd like to thanks for your, thank you for your time. The link X2 is available now, um, please contact the office and they will um, be able to give you more information and talk to you about it. If you have any queries, questions, please let us know um, and we can um, we can answer, answer them etc. anyway.